Mark O'Neill here with O'Neill Outdoors. It is November 23rd and I got the day off. So, finish ups on some household stuff and chores and now we're going to take on out and uh, see if we can't find us a good muley or a whitetail. Um, mule deer season up here opened up just the other day and there's some some good bucks out there I'm chasing one specific one um, and I think it's it's older brother that uh, it's older brother sort of reached its peak but in its prime but there's one really nice buck out there and uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to find him. it's 12:30 right now it's pretty warm it's 71 degrees and um, it's very, very windy. So I'm gonna to try to use that in all the canyons to my advantage. See if we can't get done. I've been scouting a little bit and Let's see if you can't see this. Way out there. Really nice one. He's not exactly the one that we were gonna be hunting. But he's a nice buck. And he keeps dropping in here and coming back up. I think we're gonna get out, use the wind in our advantage, and see what we can't make happen. Well, I ranged him. He's right at like 1,100 yards, uh, 1,120. So the way I figure it, with the wind, if I can drop down and keep going, at least four or 500 yards and then hug the, the rim line, which is just a little bit below, uh, so I don't create a silhouette and keep that wind up against me, pushing him this way. I might be able to get two or 300 yards away and make a really quick shot. Um, he's with a doe, but it's a, it's a good mature mule deer. So I'm gonna grab my rifle, a couple knives and a hat and see what we can do. The wind is absolutely terrible. So, new game plan, I'm heading back to the truck. I'm gonna get in, take that fence right back, go all the way back around, and then I'm gonna try to drop in another canyon beyond, and then uh, try to covertly go uh, across the canyon draws, and uh, hopefully I won't get seen. So, check in here in a minute. Man, that wind is something else. Like it is truly just howling out. I'll, uh, I'll try to check and see what what it's blowing at, but man, it's unreal. I'll have to check that when I get home, but it's, it's bad. We might actually have a really, really hard time getting on this buck. All right, so I came across the other team. Uh, I made my way over. One time I'm gonna crest over this hill. It's gonna be really on the other side of that canyon. And uh, I know I'm talking a little bit loud, but with all this wind, um, it's, it's great cover and an easy way to sneak up on things. The bad thing about it as well is with all the wind in all these canyons, at any moment as the wind shifts, he's gonna set me really, really quick. So he can get a good sniff on me and then it's over. So. I'm gonna wait just a couple of minutes and then uh, I'm way over to the next next ridge. Okay. Way over there. So I drove back around, got out, parked and got out and then walked down up that draw, came back up. coming in from the side should be good but uh yeah so i'm gonna try to get it all on camera but uh don't have a tripod on me so we'll just see what we can do
ways to creep up from here. Uh, from yucca to yucca. I'm gonna start here, go to that one, I might go to that one, go to that one, go to that one. But I'll sit here at each yucca for, I don't know, five or so minutes, and then slowly creep up the next one. But each two or three steps that I take, it's gonna expand a lot of ground that I'm gonna be able to see a lot more in all these canyons. over here wait and I know I'm gonna push him out as soon as he goes over to that top ridge I'm gonna shoot ah oh man I didn't realize that when I was, so he was coming up this this next ridge and I didn't realize when I put the camera down, it didn't uh, stay up. And I totally, totally didn't get it on camera. Um, so what happened was he was, he was going up that next ridge and he popped over actually. And I waited and waited and waited and then started the camera. He popped back over trying to find that doe that wasn't following him yet. And when he did, I shot. But I dropped the camera. I wasn't even uh, wasn't even ready. So yeah, I think uh, I ranged him over back there at, at 350. So I'm assuming I'm around 330. There's my blind. There's one of my feeders. He was down here in this canyon draw. So where my feeder is, he's just over into that next canyon or that that next uh, valley. So I'll range it when I get back over there from up here. Oh, I wish I would have got that on camera. But no, this is a great example of being prepared um, or not being prepared. I didn't have any of my camera stuff today and by camera stuff, I just, I do all this on my iPhone. Everything I do is on my iPhone. I might carry a GoPro here or there, but like all this stuff, all on my phone. I didn't have any stands. I didn't have any tripods. I didn't have any, just anything. I had one backup like uh, battery charger and a cord. So at least I had that or else my phone would be dead right now. I figure by the time we drive back around and everything else, fucking truck, by the time we drive back around and everything, we'll give them a, a good solid hour and uh, I'll try to park as close as I can, bring a sled in or something, but I know that bucks down, but um, good practice is always, always give them enough time. And if you're unsure, just come back tomorrow. So this is what it's about right here, man. Big muley bucks. I can't get it in there. I'm gonna have to build a tripod for it. What's up? Hey, everybody. So, here's that muley. Check that out. Look at the time length on these things. Man, so this is proof that enough time and dedication you put into your hunt, you could be just as successful as I can. Got my blind right up there. Shot him 350 yards away that direction, heading this way. Crazy, crazy wind. First shot, gut shot him bad. Uh, corrected for wind, got back on him, made another shot, boom. I wish I would've got that on camera, but yeah. So great, great, great mule deer. I gotta feed my family. Thank you, Lord. And just, uh, you know, be thankful for everything, everyone. Um, at this point, I wanted to take a moment and say thanks to Landon and all the, the crew over at Semper Sharp. Semper Sharp Knives, they're out of Alaska. Veteran owned, he's a United States Marine. He was a former Marine. And uh, 
Landon's a damn good guy. But anyway, getting into it. A couple weeks ago, I won a uh, number one of eight Honey Badger XL Semper Sharp knife. I forgot all the details on it. I'm going to do a review on them. But I wanted to give a big shout out to Landon and his crew. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, Semper Sharp, Honey Badger XL. Going to do the work on a big Texas mule deer. I'm Mark O'Neill with O'Neill Outdoors. Y'all take care. Stay safe.